All three victims in the Chapel Hill triple murder were Muslims. And because of comments the suspect allegedly left on Facebook, a lot of people on social media raising the question, was this a hate crime? So joining me now to talk about this is Nihad Awadi, the executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations and CNN legal analyst Mark O'Mara. Good evening, gentlemen. What a, what a sad evening. And to listen, I don't know how those two young people had the courage to even come on television tonight. Nihad, you know, you called on law enforcement authorities to address speculation about possible bias motive for the killing of these three young people, three young Muslims. Do you believe this was a hate crime? Well, thanks uh, for having me, Don, first. Uh, and I'm here in, in Chapel Hill uh, to support the family. We drove up from Washington, D.C. Uh, I personally met with the parents of the, two, uh, the three victims, uh, and I spoke to the fathers of them. Uh, one father told me that um, his uh, two daughters, uh, one of them, the one who got married, Yusur, and moved with her husband, uh, felt, uh, according to him, the, the hostility from the neighbor. And she believed that because of uh, her being Muslim, wearing the hijab, she uh, shared her um, uh, anxiety and fear uh, with her father, and f his, her father told us uh, this. So um, we, we asked the local law enforcement and federal law enforcement authorities to take that into account while investigating. Uh, today I met with the mayor, with the uh, police chief, and with the U.S. Uh, District Attorney Office, and we trust that the, this investigation will not rule out Mm -hmm. any possibility including a hate crime mm -hmm. but the focus should be tonight and and for for many days to come uh, uh, on on the beautiful lives that not only the muslim community uh, uh, lost but the nation these uh, beautiful courageous uh, contributing vibrant uh, three individuals have inspired uh, thousands of people to be right. active to be participant in community service and, and uh, from the way I saw here on Chapel Hill, uh, uh, throughout the vigil that took place, thousands of people turned up from the entire uh, local communities. It's, it's very heartwarming that these three individuals who knew nothing about hate, uh, uh, their lives were ended in a very, very sad and manner. And like you heard from the two students there who uh, went to the vigil and they are echoing what you say. And I want to talk a little bit more about the hate crime aspect of this. Mark, I want to read this to you. This is from uh, the Facebook page of the gunman. His name is Craig Hicks. Uh, he describes himself as an anti-theist, and he posted condemnations of all religions. He also allegedly posted anti-religious statements on his Facebook page. Here's, here's what it says. When it comes to insults, your religion started this, not me. If your religion kept its big mouth shut, so would I. I need to say that CNN couldn't independently confirm the authenticity of the post on his Facebook page, but it's, and it's also unclear which religion he's talking about, Mark. But yes. having said that and read that and you heard from the students and you heard from the family, do you believe that these three murders were motivated by uh, an anti-Islam bias? Well, first, my prayers are with the victims' families and the whole Muslim community with what they're going through with this loss. The hate crime statutes that are passed are sort of a filter that we look at any violent crime to see whether or not one of the reasons for the crime was hatred or animosity towards religious, race, ethnicity. So I like the idea that we have the hate crime statutes and that we're talking about it because we need to look in, through a, a focus to see whether or not this man acted with hatred. Certainly what you just mentioned is one element, one piece of evidence that suggest that he had a hatred, a dislike for the Muslim community, potentially. If that was the only piece of evidence, I don't think it's enough, quite honestly. But what I do think we need to do is wait, let law enforcement do the job that they're going to do to look through his social media, see what groups he's a member of, see his neighbors and what he said. Because the hatred that exists for a hate crime exists in the person's mind. It's how he, a mm -hmm. reason why he acted the way he acted. And that's going to come from the way he talks to other people. We haven't seen a lot of it yet, but I like the idea that law enforcement is going to look at it closely because if it gives an ex a reason or shows the reason why this person acted, at least we might be able to learn how not to act this way in the future. Gentlemen, thank you. That's going to have to be the last word, uh, at least uh, for now. We uh, had the breaking news. So sorry to, uh, I wanted to spend more time with you this evening. Thank you both. Mm -hmm.